Notice, though, he says here that he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Now, so what's he telling us here? These are all things you can, and hopefully you're making some notes or at least thinking about some of these things. But notice it says that it's better for you that Jesus go away so he can send the Holy Spirit, which is a comforter, okay? And it says when he comes, he's going to reprove the word of sin, righteousness, and judgment. But now notice when he comes, it says he will guide you into all truth. That's a promise that you should be holding on to and saying, you said the Holy Spirit will guide me into all truth. I want all truth. I don't want partial truth. I want all truth. And you open up for that all truth, and the Holy Spirit will start to show you things to come. And he will take of things that he heard from the Father and heard through Jesus and then show them unto you, and he will bring them out to you. Amen? But most Christians don't go that far. But if you want to have, say, it's amazing because we always hear all these sermons about intimacy with the Holy Spirit, intimacy with the Father, all these things. And yet the very things that cause that, most Christians won't do. It's, it's like saying, uh, I'm, I'm going to you know, go through here, I'm going to call you my best friend. What, what, what's your name? Okay, if you're a best friend, you already know the name. If I don't know your name, you ain't my best friend. <laughs> that makes sense? And yet people want a best friend relationship when they don't even know the first name of the person. <clears throat> I have a lot of people that come along that want to be my best friend. And they really don't want to be my best friend. What they really want is just to be close so that they can watch what goes on and see what happens and you know, learn and grow and then go do what they want to do, which is all fine and good. But there's a difference. Because if you're a best friend, that's a whole different level, Right? And yet people want to be best friend with the Holy Spirit and yet don't want to spend time with him, don't want to do what, it, what pleases him, and don't want to do the things that he enjoys doing. You say, well, what does the Holy Spirit enjoy doing? I don't know. Look at Jesus' life. Uh-huh. All right? Why? Because he gave total freedom to the Holy Spirit to work through him. Right? And look what he did. And now he's going to come into us and not want to live the same way? Come on. If you had that kind of power... If you were the Holy Spirit and you had that kind of power, would you not want to just go about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil? Of course you would. But see, that's where the devil gets us entangled in the affairs of this life. So he can keep us busy and keep us thinking about everything except what we need to be doing. So, now, let's keep going. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Still talking about the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer. And so we're going to bring these kind of home you might say in some of these things but I would just want you to start getting an idea the Holy Spirit is in you he wants to work with you he is he tends to be a gentleman he won't interrupt you generally speaking unless you give him that freedom to do it at all times anyway according to your will and so you he will speak up in you he will show you things but you actually have to include him you ever see somebody that's in a group but they're not really included in the conversation and they're sitting over by themselves and you know but and they're just left alone That's how the Holy Spirit is in many Christians' lives. They're busy about their stuff. They're glad he's there, but not so glad they want to engage him all the time. Amen? So, 